Hey everyone, Itay Manero here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to paint using a loose technique with watercolors in Procreate. So let's jump right into it. In order to achieve this, I'm going to be using the watercolor experience brush set for Procreate. You can find it along with a free mini version for you to try out on my Gumroad page through the link in the description below. I have just released a new update for the full version of this set that includes 6 new watercolor wash sheets and 4 new watercolor brushes. We are going to be using one of these new brushes a lot in this video and also one of the new watercolor wash sheets. This update is of course free for all previous customers of this set, so if you are one of them, make sure to check your emails for more information on how to get the new files. For today's painting, I'm going to be using this beautiful photo reference by Gareth Paul. You can also find a link to download this reference in the description of this video in case you would like to follow along. The first thing I'm going to do as always is to prepare my canvas. I will be using my usual 8.5 by 11 inches canvas size at 300 dpi. I'm going to import the paper texture called white cotton watercolor paper that is included with this set. Then I'll set this layer to multiply mode. I'm also importing the watercolor sheet called 2022 Winter Washes number 4 that is included with the new update. I'm placing this layer right below the paper texture and I set it to overlay mode. It is important to keep in mind that we need to do all our drawing and painting below these two layers. Before we continue, remember that you can see what brush I'm using at all times by looking at this rectangle here. Using the grainy pencil brush from the watercolor experience set, I'm blocking out the main elements in the picture. I'm mostly translating to the canvas the proportions and relationships in size of all the objects with each other. For example, notice how for the flowers and the violin, I'm not even starting with their real shapes, but blocking the general size they would have in the space by marking their width and height with two rectangles. Then I can start sketching their real shapes inside those rectangles. The goal here is not to end up with a super detailed sketch, but more to have everything in the right place, with somewhat accurate proportions and making sure to represent the composition according to the reference. Once I have the sketch finished, I'm going to alpha lock this layer, color fill it with blue, and lower the opacity. I like to do this so that I can see my lines better on top of the sketch when I'm inking. I use blue, but you could use any color you like, because we can hide this layer when the ink is finished. For the inking part, I'm going to use the bleeding pen brush. Because my goal is to make a very loose type of watercolor painting, I want my inking lines to also be as loose as possible, so it is important that my hand is very relaxed. I want to do my lines with a little bit of a careless attitude, so I'm not going to care so much about undoing my lines. I don't want them to be perfect, so if a line doesn't go as I expected, I will let it be. I also find that not zooming in too often helps me to be less precise, which is exactly what I'm after with this style. Another thing I'm trying to do is to have the right amount of detail, not too much, not too little. I want the objects to be recognizable, but with just the right amount of lines that hint at the details without giving it all away. For all the watercolor part, I'm going to be using the super loose brush that comes with the new update. I made this brush specifically for this style of loose watercolor painting, so I highly recommend you to give it a go. Actually this is the only watercolor brush that I'm going to use for this painting today. First I'm going to paint an area in the background to see how the watercolor sheet looks and adjust its opacity to my liking depending on how strong I want the texture to be. 
I think around 50% opacity can look great, but I can always readjust it later. So for this loose technique, I have developed a few important steps that will make this style of painting a success. The first one is that I like to paint the background in the same layer as my inking lines. The reason for this is that some of those lines in the contours of the objects will blend nicely with the watercolor. As you can see, my process here is to lay down the color wash carefully so that I don't go inside the objects too much. I also try to leave some white bits here and there, so that the paper shows through in some parts. I keep slightly changing the color as I lay down the watercolor wash, and using the smudge tool with the same brush to blend some of those colors in the areas they overlap. I want the darkest area of the background to be in the left side, just like in the reference, so you can notice how I'm switching the color to a lighter and more yellow tone as I go to the right of the canvas. It is important to not try to cover the whole white of the paper, I like to leave all those areas surrounding the image uncovered, and I use the smudge tool to blend those edges with the white of the paper. The nice thing about watercolor is to mix hard with soft edges, so don't blend everything away. Leave some parts with a harder edge, like I'm doing here. Now I'm painting the pot and the flowers, and notice that for the rest of the painting I'm already painting on a single layer below the inking lines. When painting loose, it is super important to have the right mindset. You don't have to care so much about the result. Don't try to be perfect with your strokes. I don't mind to go out of the lines a little bit, and also I'm not trying to cover everything. Look at how much pieces of white you can see through the flowers and through the pot. I'm also leaving the highlight parts of the objects untouched, so the white of the paper acts as those highlights. Another thing to mention is that I'm only using the blending tool very sparely. I do most of the work with just the paint tool and the super loose brush and using the smudge tool only when I want to mix some of the colors, but mostly I like to leave those hard edges and let the colors blend with each other naturally due to the transparency of the watercolor. Look at how loose I'm painting those oranges on the table. Because they are small elements in the composition, I could get tempted to zoom in to be able to paint the details better, but I'm refraining myself. The idea is to represent the oranges with the minimum amount of strokes possible, almost like broad spots of colors. You can also see that I'm painting outside of the lines a little bit, and I don't mind it. The same goes for this flower on the table. My strokes are under control, but I'm allowing them to be messy, while also making sure to leave some spots uncovered by the paint. Here I'm painting the shadows from the objects over the surface, and as I paint them, I try to shift the color slightly to give the painting more richness, always looking at my reference and trying to capture the warmth and subtleties of its color palette. I'm using the smudge tool to blend some of those overlaps between colors too. To paint the wooden surface of the table, I'm trying to choose warmer and slightly darker colors for the part in the back, and lighter and more light orange tones for the front area, as we can observe in the reference. Then I go in with a darker brown color, to add more variation in some spots near the objects. As you can see, even in the table, I'm leaving some little pieces of white from the paper untouched in those areas where the colors would touch the previously painted places. Now I'm looking at the whole piece and adding a few more darker brush strokes to the flowers and the pot to balance the contrast in relation to the rest of the painting before moving on to the violin. I'm starting with the darker parts of the instrument. Notice how the highlights that I observe in the reference are left untouched by the watercolor in my painting, leaving the white of the paper to show through.
and doing the same thing for the body, while changing the color more often, to reflect the richness of colors and tonalities we can see in the reference. My process here is to place spots of color and then blending them together in some spots. It's important to not overdo the blending, remember to let some hard edges be a part of your painting. To add some final details, I'm using the bleeding pen brush to draw the strings very loosely and a couple of splatter touches using existing colors from my painting, like grey, brown and white. This is how the final painting looks. I thought on quickly showing you a couple more paintings I did, using this exact method we just went through. This one was also based on a photo reference by Gareth Paul. I think you can feel how spontaneous and fun this type of digital watercolor can be, just by looking at the time lapse. It is a great way to free your mind and enjoy the painting process, in a way that is very specific to painting with real watercolors, now translated to the digital medium using these brushes and method. Here's a different type of subject, painted from a photo reference by Alexander Grigoriev. I think it could be really fun and interesting to keep some kind of art journal using this watercolor technique. None of these paintings I'm showing you took me more than 30 minutes to make, so it can actually be a really fast, but beautiful way to work or take quick visual notes. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you give this technique a go yourself. If you use my brushes and post your art on social media, feel free to use the hashtag ManeroBrushes so that I can see what you create. I will be extremely happy to share your creations with my audience. Don't forget to subscribe for more art related videos and give me a thumbs up. Also, make sure to check out my Gumroad page, where you will find the watercolor experience brush set for Procreate, and many other sets that I have available, I'm sure something will suit your artistic needs. All the links are in the description below. Okay, thank you for watching, see you next time.